So were there any of your family involved in the stolen generations? And if so, how did that impact on your family? Look, I, I've really come to understand how much stolen generation has impacted on my family um, just in the last few years. And I guess a lot of it's been assumptions from what's happened. But um, sadly, my nana had a child um, that she had from birth um, through till he was about nine. And my auntie Maisie um, told me about the time the police came. And it used to be quite a common thing on um, the Framlingham Reserve that the police would come and take the, the kids that were a bit lighter in colouring. Um, and my uncle was about nine when he was taken from my family. Um, my, my auntie Maisie just said, you know, the kids were screaming, you know, absolutely screaming. And the elders would be saying, you know, you've got to run to the bush, you've got to hide. And, you know, he was only young and he thought that it was like hide and seek. And so she said that she's never gotten over it because she felt responsible. You know, she was older and she felt that she should have saved him and protected him. She told me about, um, excuse me if I start to cry, because it's just, it's really hard to think about someone that you love and care about. It's really hard um, to think about those memories. And um, so... Marnie Maisie was saying that my nana, you know, was begging the police, absolutely begging the police, could she please get some food together um, for my uncle um, so that he could take the food with him? And she said about how my nana was running behind the car and, um, yeah, it's, it's hard to think about um, the impact on my nana. And I think in a lot of ways that's impacted a lot of our lives that... A lot of the memories are just so painful that they couldn't talk about them. Um, and so lots of things that I found were repercussions of that. Um, you know, my auntie, Marnie Maisie, you know, um, my nana never got to see, you know, her son again. Um, he actually came many, many years his son actually came many years later um, trying to find my nana, but by then she'd married again and he couldn't find her because she was under a different name. Um, but, you know, my cousin's now part of our family and we get to see him and I think it was one of the proudest moments of my life was when my auntie Maisie actually died that um, he was asked to do the readings at her funeral and... You know, it was kind of like full circle. It was kind of like, you know, he's now part of us. And the thing I found really amazing about it was that even though he'd not been a part of the Aboriginal community for like 30 years when he found out about, you know, who he was and where he came from, that he was exactly like us, exactly like us. And it made me think a lot about things that happened in our family that we didn't realise and one of the things that was really significant to me was our own immediate family had expanded and I remember my sister saying to my mum, we need to get some more cups because my, uh, my mum only had her, you know, four or five cups and that was it because I realised the repercussion of having someone stolen from your family was you spent the rest of your life worrying about... We, you know, were you going to be stolen or were your kids going to be stolen from you? So my mum would have to have the house immaculate. Everything would have to be absolutely perfect. So you could only have X amount of plates and X amount of cups and X amount of glasses because you'd have to keep those clean. You'd have to have everything just spotless, you know, because if, you know, the police came again and took you, you could say, well, my house is immaculate. I've got plenty of food in the cupboard. You know, that was a big obsession, and I, and I realised why, you know, having a brother that was taken from them really impacted on them. Um, this was at Framlingham, um, and my nana then left Framlingham and ended up living in the bush. So my mum grew up, you know, in a, a shack, you know, no running water, no um, floors, you know, dirt floors, um, cooking on a campfire, you know, because my nana was just so scared she was going to lose other kids. So I think a lot of the things that I realised, that defensiveness and that 
um, not bringing up memories, they were too painful, you know? And as a teenager, I actually found out that I had another uncle, you know? And I was like, why did I not know I had the other uncle? You know, but it's just, it, you know, the pain, you know, the, the pain of those kinds of memories just, were just too hard, I think.